Blessings. Before this wonderful message from my father in the Lord, late Archbishop Bensi Idaosa, I'd like to share information about anointedtube.com with you, the number one Christian video sharing website today. Anointedtube.com. This is a powerful site believed to be the top most Christian video sharing website in the world today. It is ranked as one of the best video sharing website according to available data. It hosts videos of preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from all around the world. You can as well share our video on all social media platforms. The World Database of Christian Preachers, positively touching and changing lives around the world. It is a great Christian video sharing website. The Lord bless you. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers' pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. to say to you you know why to whom much is given much is expected this is a vision we must not allow to die God bet this place we must be alive to keep it alive how many of you can say amen to that we build both city and village churches if they had left me and said God bless you devil would have killed me but they join hand with me to say, Lord, what would thou have me do? Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm going to believe God. No sickness in your body will follow you home. No pain in your body will follow you home. And everything that God asks you to do in this ministry, you will not be discouraged to go back. I want you to get up and say, God, you sent me to Carpenter's Home Church use me god make me a soul winner god make me an instrument of honor in your hand if that is you come forward right now get up from where you are and join us here thank you thank you from this side come forward this is not dr castrator's church this is the church of jesus christ he was just an instrument to do it but this is the work of the lord can I hear you say amen? Thank you.
You're all right there. Thank you. Fine. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Yes, hallelujah. Thank God for your commitment. Thank God for your commitment. Hallelujah. Somebody lift your hand up. Just lift your hand up. Oh, lift your hand up. Lift your hand up. Lift your hands up. Oh, raise your hands. Say with me, Lord, here am I. Use me. Lord, here am I. Stir my spirit. Lift me up again. Give me joy in your service to follow you all the days of my life. I know, Lord, you put me here to work for you, to work for you, to labor in your vineyard. I commit myself afresh to you from now to serve you and do whatsoever you call upon me to do in faithfulness, in tithe, in offering, in giving, in preaching, in ministering. Use me, Lord. Use me, Lord. Use me, Lord. I surrender myself to you. In Jesus' name. Say loud, Amen. amen. Put your hands down. Listen to this. If you forget everything I have said today, don't forget this. God is the one that brought you to this church. Not man. Not him. Not Steve. But God. But God put them here to give you direction. Sometimes, sometimes, our faith is weak. But God whom we are following is not weak. Sometimes we are discouraged. But we are not discouraged. Because he who is in us is encouraging us. I want you to rededicate yourself. If every one of you here this morning will win one soul, this time, next month, this church will be double. God didn't give you this facility so you can stroll in and stroll out. So you can beg God to give you miracle, then you go out and face obstacles. You are to use here as a center of excellence to win soul for the kingdom of God. How many will say, God, here am I, use me? Amen. I want you now to put your right hand on your forehead. Say after me, my dear father, by your stripes, I'm healed. From the crown of my head to the sole of my feet, I'm healed. In body, in soul, in spirit, I'm healed. Now, in Jesus' name, amen. Now put your hand there. Father, I take authority and dominion over every foul attack of the enemy. In these bodies, from this minute, I rebuke the devourer. I curse the destroyer. I command you from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. Be healed in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. You are our healer and our restorer. In Jesus' name. Everybody say amen. Amen. I thank you for your recommitment to God. In service and in the call of his life ministry. I pray that today, upward, all your friends will be Elizabeth. Who when you go to their home, the vision in you will lift up. Not the person who you tell, God just gave me a new car. And he says, what? Are you sure you're a Christian? No. You need someone who will stir your vision up. Somebody who will spur you to action. Somebody you say, I'm going to an evening service. Who will say, I'm going to. Not the one that we asked you, were you not there last week? You need a challenger for good. 
are not a destroyer of evil. Amen? 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 Every living thing, two of every sort shall you bring into the ark, male and female. Save them from the coming Armageddon. All the wild beasts shall be in your keeping. Two of every species from the beginning of time. The second name to this world is called trouble. And the day you will know that salvation does not eliminate trials. The fact that you are baptized with the Holy Ghost does not send devil to hell. Jesus didn't say kill the devil, he said cast him out. I hope you understand the difference. If you cast him out from Atlanta, he may go to Chicago, but he's still there. No matter how holy you are, holiness does not push Satan to hell. Holiness makes you a better person. Say amen. Holiness makes you live longer. Say amen. Holiness makes you an instrument in the hand of God. Say amen. But your righteousness does not kill the devil. You know what the Lord told me? He said, if you permit me to test you at the beginning, it will stand for a long time. I do not want to ride a Mercedes as a boy and ride a bicycle as an adult. I prefer every trial that I have from God. Give it to me while I'm young. So when I'm old, I can cross my feet. I can say, I was young, but now I am old. I have never seen the righteous forsaken. No, he sees begging for blood.
may become the act of this church every Sunday to find out the person you're standing near, how they have been during the week. Someone needs your smile. Someone needs your love. And that's what we are here for. For the next several reasonable minutes, I want to speak on what I call the knockdown for a rising up. Did you hear me? Many, many times before God lifts you high, He knocks you down first. I don't know why. So I want to speak on the subject, the knocking down for a lifting up. Tell your neighbor, the knocking down for a lifting up. Be seated. Daniel chapter 10. Lift your Bible if you have one this morning. Don't come to church with newspaper. Come with your Bible. Lift it up and say, I have my Bible. Amen. Daniel chapter 10. In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a thing was revealed unto Daniel, whose name was called Bethesda. And the thing was true, but the time appointed was long. How can you imagine Almighty God show you something real? It's like God bringing out $1,000 and says, Son, I heard you are in need. I heard you have need of $1,000. I have it. And you stretch your hand to pick it and say, hold on. How will you feel if the good things you dreamt about, the thing that God showed you is going to use you to do, accomplish in life, the lives of nations for you to reach? God told you, I'm going to use you to go to Australia 10 years ago. And he said, get ready, pack your things, Get ready for Australia. And you tell your wife, I'm on my way to I'm on my way now to Australia. The Lord told me last night, go to Australia, go to Sydney, conduct a seminar. I'm going to stand by you. You are going to heal many people. The Lord will use you to change lives. And you are dancing and jumping. You tell your wife, you tell your children. Then you come to church in the morning and say, Bishop, the Lord said I should go to Australia. And I know you are going to send me. I said, Don, I didn't say God didn't say so, but you are not going. They are going to say, I rebuke you. You wouldn't say it out, but you rebuke him. But many times, when you rebuke God, he refused to rebuke. <laughs> Is anybody hearing what I'm saying this morning? Several times, I tried to say, God, that's not you. So I bind the devil. He said, when you finish binding, see me. <laughs> I don't know why. But here is what the Bible is saying to you and I. A thing was revealed. A thing was made known to Daniel. And the thing was true. But. True. But. How do you have endurance for but? How patient are you? When you are anxious to get married, and any brother you say good morning to say, don't tempt me. <laughs> How patient are you when you are in a hurry to have baby, and you get married, and the doctor diagnoses you to have fibrous, and say to you, your pregnancy is in doubt. Or you say, I'm pregnant. And you are very anxious, you start to buy things for your baby. Now you go to the gynecologist and say, lie down. They examine you and say, you have no baby. How do you handle those times of expectation that fall short of good things? What do you feel? When your ears are tuned to hear good news, 
and the person you ask good news give you bad news how do you handle your time and God's time do you mean that God can tell lie the answer is no does it mean that God doesn't know what he's telling you the answer is no my question to you this morning can God deceive a man my answer to you is no but what happens if your time and his time doesn't agree? <sighs> the thing was true, but the time appointed was not yet. That's one of the things that we have no patience for. The time appointed, not yet. How do you deal with appointment not yet? How do you deal with you find you're looking for a home to buy and your friend comes to you and say, Doctor, I just found three homes near my home. They are selling them auction. The house is worth two million, but they want to sell it for $150,000. And then you go to your bank in anxiousness and the bank says you are not credit worthy. How do you feel when you think after going around the building you already made up this is my room this is for my wife this is for my son this is my daughter this is where the guest room this is going to be oh lord oh la mahaka solo boroya iyalaba hey kept murabaya said hmm this is the lord's doing after you have bragged and your swollen spirit is punctured how do you handle that aspect of your life? Do you still say all things work together for good? Are you using your time to time God? Or you are working on God's timing? I have now known from 37 years of knowing the Lord that many times my time and his time is not the same. I'm anxious, he's not anxious. I'm in hurry, he's the God of peace. A brother came to me two years ago, doctor said, Papa, Papa, I need prayer. I said, what do you need prayer for? He said, I need the gift of patience. I said, when? He said, now. <laughs> you didn't hear what I said. What gift do you need? Patience, when? Do you understand that? If you need patience, you don't need it now. Do you understand English? I need prayer for patience. When do you want the prayer? Now. You've already failed the test. Because if you need that patience, you say it and go. That's patient. But if you want it now, you don't need patience. You're asking for the gift of anxiety. look at verse 2 and I will tell you as the message continue how to handle that the time appointed was long and he understood the thing and had understanding of the vision in those days I Daniel was mourning three full weeks I ate no pleasant bread neither came flesh nor wine in my mouth Neither did I anoint myself at all till three whole weeks were fulfilled. And in the four and twentieth day of the first month, as I was by the side of great river, which is Hidekel, then I lifted up my eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose leons were guided with fine gold of offer. His body also was like the bell, and his face as the appearance of lightning, and his eyes as lamps of fire, and his arms as feet like in color to polished brass, and the voice of his was like the voice of a multitude. Verse 7. And I, Daniel, alone saw the vision, for the men that were with me saw not the vision. But a great quaking fell upon them 
so that they fled to hide themselves. Therefore I was left alone and saw this great vision and there remained no strength in me for my commonliness was turned into me into corruption and I retained no strength. How do you feel when you want to stand and you see yourself on the floor? This is not devil dealing with Daniel. This is God. I saw what God showed me. I saw what God said. But what God showed me knocked me down. Feel when the man you told all your secrets sell you out. How do you feel when your confidence becomes your betrayer? How do you feel when the person that says, go ahead, see you fall and say, I told you you are going to fall. What happened when the person you lean on give way? To you women, how will you feel after three years of preparing for a wedding? Next week will be the wedding day. And on Thursday, the man said, the Lord told me not to. Do you still say, to God be the glory? Do you still remember that the Bible said, not one hair will pull out of your head without noticing God? Do you remind yourself that the step of a righteous man is ordered by God? How do you handle disappointment? Daniel said, the Lord knocked me down. And all who journeyed with me fled. How do you handle, let us pray. And then you meet with your committee members, ministers. This way, all of you come here. Quick, quick, quick. Pastor John, lead your team here. Tomorrow and next tomorrow, no food, no water, no eating, no traveling, no movement. Come closer. I'm talking now as Archbishop. Presbyters, tomorrow, this is illustration. No food, <laughs> no water, no going to a job. We must all be here at 7 a.m. for prayer. We want to see the move of God in this ministry. Yes or no? Everybody, yes or no? Yes. Congregation, yes or no? Yes. What happened if those we discussed and they say, Pastor, announce. And then you, suddenly when we close, not you, but this is illustration. <laughs> I heard, we heard, we heard what he said. But does that mean that we have nothing to do? You going to do that? You going to take part? Coming here by six o'clock for the rest of the week? You go nowhere? No. And not me. Are you going to do that? Are you going to take them? Aren't you busy? Don't you have anywhere to go? Don't you have any preaching? You, you understand? You are my number two man. Okay. Yeah. You preach the opposite of what I preach for today. Right. You tell them what to do. All right. Yeah. You're not going to do it. No good. <laughs> yeah. don't, don't you have where to go? Don't you have anywhere to go? Don't you have where to go? You think choir should be singing for the whole of the week? What's my microphone here? <laughs> Just a minute. What happened if the person you told what God told you, now take the microphone and preach opposite? And then suddenly tomorrow morning you are here by 6 o'clock. And all of them, only two came. The rest of you, bye-bye. Go, go back to your seat. What happened when you expected 30 people and two came and the two that came said we just came to take excuse from you <laughs> we have somewhere we are going you know before you made your announcement I, I already planned my life out you didn't give me notice so will you also go away you have somewhere to go you're not going what of you gonna be right here gonna be here yes that's surprising <laughs> where are the rest people you, you're not going to follow the crowd? They you're going to stay with me? They, had someplace else to go. they have somewhere else to go. But you have to follow me to follow the Lord. Yes. Thank you very much.
Now, do you know that with these two, we can do more than with the crowd? God is looking for willing hearts. God is looking for few who will stay like Esther. If I perish, I perish. God is looking for few like Ruth. Your God shall be my God. Your people shall be my people. This congregation is very important. But God doesn't use all to win all. Did anybody hear what I'm saying? I told my wife 4 o'clock this morning. I said, one of the trouble you and I have, I couldn't just tell her she has. I have to say we. <laughs> but I know I was talking to her. <laughs> one of the trouble two of us have, it's not me and you, it's only you, but you and us have. <laughs> have you ever talked like that? You know that you are saying the real thing, but you don't know how to put it so she's not offended. Is that you try to struggle with unwilling people. Many times the people you call your number two are not even number ten. Many times the people you think you're going to lean on on the day of trouble have no back. So many times the people you think this is natural. Don't you think when trouble come, we stand by you. Are looking for who will stand by them. It's natural. Daniel said, I fell down. The earth quakes. Your business earth may quake. Your marriage earth may quake. Your family earth may quake. When your ground quake and everyone you look up to flee from you, what do you do? Do you because you're said to be relied on man fled, you flee from your vision? Should you abort your dream? Because you thought I was going to stand by you and I fled from you. Daniel said, I alone. I saw the vision. I knew what God said. When they all fled, I remained on the ground. I lost my strength, but I didn't lose my God. Everybody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Every man may flee from you. Every friend may turn their back. He has promised, I will never leave you nor forsake you. The ground may shake so much that you have no leg to stand. But the God that gave you the vision will not cancel the vision. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I don't know what is quaking around you. I don't know what is pushing you down. I know if God gives you a knockdown, He's going to give you a lifting up. Hallelujah. It may be a financial knockdown. It may be a marriage knockdown. It may be a business knockdown. It may be a family knocked down. It may be a, a relationship knocked down. But if for any reason God allows you to be knocked down, He's getting ready to lift you up. I lost my strength. The strength in me. Now you're talking of friends fled from you. That's what Daniel is saying. He said, not only my friend left me, my strength left me. What happened to you when you are not enough for yourself? 
Is anybody hearing me this morning? The day you will know that the second name to this world is called trouble. And the day you will know that salvation does not eliminate trials. The fact that you are baptized with the Holy Ghost does not send devil to hell. Jesus didn't say kill the devil, he said cast him out. I hope you understand the difference. If you cast him out from Atlanta, he may go to Chicago, but he's still there. Is anybody hear what I'm saying? Jesus didn't kill the devil, he cast him out. That's why he's still able to operate. But once you know that heaven and earth may pass away, but God and his word will remain the same. Somebody say hallelujah. Look at the next verse here. I lost my strength. Come on, pastor. I fell on the ground. Yet I heard the voice, verse 9, of his words. And when I heard the voice of his word, then was I in a deep sleep on my face. And my face toward the ground. How do you, do you think they are hearing what I'm saying? If you want to stand and you see yourself flat, not, not only knock down, but knock down, knock out. Did you hear me? If everything you thought, oh God, is going to work, didn't work. What happened when hallelujah turned to sorrelujah? What do you do when, praise the Lord, turn to sorrelujah, painful lawyer, disappointment lawyer? What happens when your friends begin to laugh at your cause? And they say, we know God didn't send you, you sent yourself. Do you pass out or you rise up? What did David do when David found himself in this situation? David said, though I walk through the valleys of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. What did Isaiah say? Isaiah said, when you see yourself in that situation, rise and shine. What did Job say? Job 22, 29, when they say, cast down, then thou shalt say, they say, lifting up. What did the Shunammite woman say? When the son died, one and only son, she said, all is well. All is well. My baby is well. My husband is well. My marriage is well. But the baby died, all is well. What do you do? The day you want to travel and rain fall. And you have no money for transportation. Do you say, how I wish I wasn't born. Job said, I wish I wasn't conceived. And if I was conceived, I should have been aborted. And if I'm not aborted, woe is the day he was born. But at the end of his story, he said, When the Lord must have tried me, I will comfort like gold. Do you know there's a shining waiting for your ugly moments? Somebody say hallelujah. There's that period you have to go through fire to achieve your life dream. There is that time in your life, no matter how holy you are, holiness does not push Satan to hell. Holiness makes you a better person. Say amen. amen. Holiness makes you live longer. Say amen. amen. Holiness makes you an instrument in the hand of God. Say amen. amen. But your righteousness does not kill the devil. He knows.
struck me down. I heard a voice. Maso marapa I heard a voice. Verse 10. Read with me loud. Come on, pastors. And behold, an hand touched me, which set me upon my knees and upon the palms of my hand. And he said unto me, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak unto thee, and stand upright, for unto thee I am now sent. And when he had spoken this word unto me, I stood trembling. There's a lifting for a knockdown. There's a hand not far away. There's a hand willing to pick you and I up. There's a hand ready to take us out of our dead room. It doesn't matter how long, how many hours, how many days. Daniel said three weeks plus, I was on the ground. When I lost my strength, when I lost my energy, when my neighbors fled, a voice came to me. I'm saying to you today, and whatever you may hear me, if all you know to do have been done and is not good enough, Stay where God will meet you. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? Don't run from your goal. There's a lifting for it, knock down. If man knock you down, God will not dig grave for you. If money knock you down, God will not bury you. I can still hear God say to you, rise and shine. Your light is come. Your light is come. Daniel said, a hand touched me. When the hand touched me, he told me, get up. Every child of God here this morning, get up. If you're a man or a woman of God, get up. Say with me loud, I'm getting up. Say it louder. Say it one more time. Make it true. I am getting up. Move your feet. I'm getting up. I'm moving on. I'm getting up. I'm moving on. I'm getting up. Come on, gentlemen. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Watch us. Say to me, get up. I didn't hear you. Yeah. Say to me, move on. Move on. Knock down. Yeah. Lift up. Move on. Say, move on. Say, move on. Move on. Move on. Move on. Don't. Don't. Build. Don't. Build condominium in the valley of trouble walk through all your valleys though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I shall fear You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation 
by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. You don't need sympathizers. You don't need sorry I heard what happened. Get up. Get up. Say it again. And do what? Say it again. Two more times. How many of you would get up and move on? Shout hallelujah. hallelujah! Let me read to you what will happen if you get up and move on. See what the Bible says will happen to you. Verse 12, then said he unto me, fear not Daniel. Say with me from now, I will not be afraid. <laughs> For from the first day that thou didst set thy heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, the words we are heard. And I'm come for thy watch. Say with me, in my knockdown time, God will hear me and lift me up. Now look at me, everybody. Look at me. Don't move one inch. Don't do any other thing. Do you understand what you are saying? That only trial can bring you triumph, and only obstacle will bring you miracle. Many of you think the man who knocked you, the quick that knocked you down, will pick you up. Anyone that was kind enough to knock you down will not be kind enough to raise you up. <laughs> and if I want to tell you the truth, any man that hates you enough to knock you down cannot love you to pick you up. <laughs> Say, I hear you. Several times, as a young preacher, Dr. Petri, I thought those who knocked me down would come and pick me up. I waited so long and none of them came. <laughs> Until I found out that the Lord liveth and blessed be the Let the God of my salvation be exalted. The Lord and blessed be and let the God of my salvation be exalted. I will call upon the Lord who is for thee to be how shall I be Everybody say hallelujah!
you from your knockdown. They knock out and they knock down for a lifting up. If God permits you to fall, He will stand by you to rise. How many can say amen to that? How many of you want God to raise you up? Usher, shut all the doors for me. I want to pray the prayer of faith. Usher, shut all the doors. Let's give the Holy Spirit five minutes for the battle that we can win on our knees than with our mouth. The hand touched me. The Lord spoke to me. He said, from the day you set your heart, I heard you. But the prince of Persia stood these 21 days. When he had spoken unto me, verse 15, the words unto me, I set my face toward the ground and I became dumb. From shouting to dumbness. Oh, because of the vision. Don, did you hear that? Vision can knock you down. Vision can take your strength. Vision can make you dumb. But stay by your vision. Stay by what God showed you. Stay by the revelation of God. A lifting is coming nearby. A hand is coming nearby. Somebody shout hallelujah. It doesn't matter how long you stay on the ground. The same power that quake the ground. The same power that knock you down. God is going to use his own force to lift you up. The 16th verse says here, And behold, one like this similitude of the Son of Man touched my lips. Then I opened my mouth and spake and said unto him that stood before me, O oh my Lord, by the vision my sorrows are turned upon me, and I have retained no strength. I am talking to you of reality. What God asks you to do that is impossible to men can almost kill you. But you will never die. I say you will never die. I say you will never die. The storm may take your roof. The storm may take your sheep. The storm may take your health. But the storm will not take your life. I see a lifting from your knockdown. Elijah said, I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. The ground may dry, but I hear a sound. God is about to speak to his church. Lazy people don't go far. Unwilling to endure don't go far. But they stand by God. They stand up by God. Those who stand by God. Those who lean upon the Lord. The Bible said, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Seventeenth verse. Look at the seventeenth verse. For now, for how can the servant of this my Lord talk with his, with this my Lord? For as for me, straightway, there remain no strength in me, neither is there breath left in me. Then there came again and taught me one. <laughs> if the first touch can do it, if the second touch can come, it's not the devil shaking you. It is the Lord. It's not your sin that brought your trial. 
The Bible did not say the test of your sin, the trial of your sin. He said the trial of your faith. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying this morning? <laughs> you think it was your sin that did that? It's your faith. It's a dream that is bigger than your expectation. God is, oh my God, my hokoso. Pastor Don, you know what the Lord told me? He said, if you permit me to test you at the beginning, you will stand for a long time. I do not want to ride a Mercedes as a boy and ride a bicycle as an adult. I'm so glad you didn't hear what I say. I prefer every trial that I have from God. Give it to me while I'm young. So when I'm old, I can cross my feet. I can say, I was young, but now I am old. I have never seen the righteous forsaken. No, he sits begging for bread. How many can say amen to that? Every trouble that God will give to you at 75 years old, may he give it to you when you are 25. Because the time of old age is a time of relaxation. People ask me in Nigeria every time, how are you able to handle criticism? I say, because I died. A dead man doesn't reply. Many of you are replying because you are not dead yet. Paul said, it's no longer I that live, but Christ that live in me. Somebody say, hallelujah. <laughs> he touched me another time. I lost my strength. But he brought his hand again. Then there came. Give me the microphone. Let him read it with American English. <laughs> Verse 18. Then there came again and touched me one like the appearance of a man, and he strengthened me. What did God do when he met you on the floor? I said, what did God do when he met you on the ground? You mean he doesn't press you and say, are you still living? What does he do? I said, what does God do? Then what does he say to you? Get up and do what? One more time, get up and get up and Perel, Bishop Perel, Bishop Adrian, every child of God, get up. me verse 19 in American language. And said, O man greatly beloved, fear not. Peace be unto thee, be strong, yea, be strong. And when he had spoken unto me, I was strengthened. And he said, Let my Lord speak, for thou hast strengthened me. Everybody do this. Say, My Lord, my Lord has strengthened me. Let me tell you three things to do. Don't reject knockdown. But don't die there.
are going to do me a favor. The Lord strengthened me. The Lord told me, be strong. Don't die in your knockdown. Move forward. Everyone who wants to move forward, just move forward a bit. No matter how close, move forward. Everybody who wants God to give you strength to go forward. Move forward to tell God to change the situation. Don't come to the church to die. Come to the church and energize yourself. Don't be afraid of trial, but don't die in your temptation. Verse 20, from now, I will stand by you to fight for you. I will return again to fight for you. How many of you want God to fight your battle every time? It's true. I was knocked down this morning. But come back and see me in the evening. Amen. For weeping may endure for a night. But joy cometh in the morning. 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 Everybody say joy. I prophesy your days of tears are over. Your days of downcast is over. Lift your hand and say hallelujah. Lift your hands and say hallelujah. Keep your hand on top. I have God so. Where there's a cast down, there's a lifting. Where the road close, there can be another road. Where there is sickness, there's healing. Where there's poverty, there's prosperity. And the Lord asked me to ask you, do you need my helping hand? How many of you need the helping hand of God? Reach your hand towards me. Daniel didn't say, the earth quaked again. His hand touched me. And I can see God lowering his hand to touch you wherever you are. Heavenly Father, I bow my knees on behalf of the bishop, the senior pastors, the presbytery, the youth ministry, every department of our ministry here, and the global ministry here represented, I bow my knees. I stretch my hand to everyone. Yesterday is the last night of your knockdown. I see God raise you up. I see God raise you up. I hear God say to you, Go on. Go on. Don't let the dream die. You may faint and lose your strength. But the vision will not die. It may tarry. But it's going to come back. Holy Spirit. Touch. 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 Holy Spirit, touch. Loose them and let them go. Loose them and let them go. Lose them and let them go. Lose them and let them go. Restore their dreams. Restore their vision. Renew their strength. Thank you, Lord. You told me if they ask you for help, you will do it. 
and I trust you that every sickness they brought here is killed. Every fear and doubt is gone. The Lord touch you for the second time. Raise you to energize you. Lift you up and put you on the way to God. And the dream shall not die. In Jesus name. Everybody say amen. amen. Christ is the same. Yesterday, today, forevermore. Shut hallelujah. He came, he saw, and he conquered. One of the greatest lessons I have learned is that nothing that comes our way that we bring before God that will not have solution no problem is too big for God to solve and none is too small for him to pay attention God does not reward our good with people when we do something good in his name when we do something good for him he doesn't say because thou hast so served me thou payest thy tithe thou givest thy offering therefore shalt thou be in trouble god is not like that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him 
Somebody say amen. Prophecy is more than laughing. Prophecy is more than falling down. Prophecy is more than rolling on the ground. Prophecy is thus says the Lord. And one thing I've heard God say to me, to you. The yoke is off your shoulder. Hallelujah. Let's all stand to our feet. Thank you, every one of us. Stand to your feet. This is my. I believe this message is blessing you. Please visit and share videos on anointedtube.com, the world database of Christian preachers, to help us reach 100 million people. The message continues after this video about anointed you. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. sanctuary for which we give God the glory I want to thank Archbishop Bolden and family and you family from Tampa for coming to support us here tonight I thank God that this is an inspiration ground I say this is an inspiration ground this is a beautiful place that anyone who believes in good should rejoice about Thank you for coming. Thank you for supporting us tonight. If Jesus were here physically tonight, he will ask you two questions. Number one, why are you here? Number two, what do you want? He will not say more than that. Many times we are in the church not asking God anything. And many times we just take it as a routine. I read one day my Bible. He said, this is your life. Serving God is your life. Knowing Christ is your life. And just in case 
You are here tonight to ask God nothing for yourself. Ask him something for me. Did you hear that? Just in case you don't know why you are here tonight, be here for me. Because to be in the house of God, I don't know why you are there. It's a waste of time. And then to be in the house of God, to ask God nothing, is also a waste of time. So you must not miss the two things. Why are you here? To worship the Lord. Why are you here? To ask him. I love what you did for us just now. I'm going to adopt it at home. For the pastor to ask every family to come out tonight. That's something new. And what I say is this. Whatever you find that is good in where you go, take it home. Amen. When, when I came to America first time about 30 years ago, the press man asked me, America is a terrible place. What did you see? I said, I said, only good things. If you are looking for bad news, ask New York Times. If you are looking for good news, ask me. We are ambassadors of good news. Can I hear you say hallelujah? hallelujah. Amen. Thank you once again, Dr. Strader, for giving us the opportunity to be here with you as a family. Before you sit down, lift up your Bible before you sit down. Those of you brethren from Canada, we are so happy to have you here with us. I thank God for the privilege of preaching in Canada for the last 27 years. Let me see your Bible lifted up. Say with me, this is my sword to defeat principalities and powers in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. You may be seated. Thank you. For the few years I have been in the ministry, which is almost 40 years, one of the greatest lessons I have learned is that nothing that comes our way that we bring before God that will not have solution. No problem is too big for God to solve. And none is too small for him to pay attention. One day, as a young preacher, I came across the scripture I'm going to read tonight. Don't preach it too much, but just read it. There is power in the word of God. How many of you believe that? Oh, lift your hands and say, I believe in the word of God. Look at the book of Nahum. In America, you call it many things, but in English it's called Nahum. N-A-H-U-M. Nahum. Let's say that in American English. Oh, good. Thank God. I'm not too far from you. Look at verse 7. Nahum chapter 1. The Lord is good. Oh, somebody say that. Maybe I'm not talking of your own tonight. I'm talking of my own. My God is a good God. For years, as a young preacher, as a young man, I first heard that from the mouth of the man who is now the president of our university, Ora Robert. Something good is going to happen to you. And a few years ago, less than 30 years ago, I heard this said, God is a good God. Somebody say amen. God is a good God. God is a good God. God is a good God. Listen to this. The Lord is good. A stronghold in the day of trouble. I am wondering how someone that is good, I who is in trouble, is permitted to hold him. May I make that a little slower. God is good. Say that. Now say that with me. Now say this with me. When I'm in trouble, 
He allows me to hold him with my trouble. Did, did anybody hear that? God has no trouble. How many of you believe that? Oh, yes. Uh, <laughs> Genesis chapter 1. The Lord God made the heaven and earth, and the earth was void, not heaven. <laughs> They, every time there's trouble, there's not one in heaven like on earth. I've never had earthquake in heaven. I've never had thunder blast in heaven. I've never had bomb in heaven. I've only read once in my Bible there was war in heaven. It didn't last too long. The man who caused the war in heaven was cast down. Somebody say hallelujah. Now listen to this. I want to make it as easy to you as I have made it easy for myself. God is good. The Lord is good. Say that two times. I didn't hear you. But when I'm in trouble, say that. He permits me to hold him. I may not make sense to you, but I'm making sense to myself. May I borrow you one more time as I did this morning? All right. This man is a man of God. Whether you believe it or not, he is. <laughs> now, he's not just been a man of God, but he's a good man. Assuming that I am terrible. And assuming that I'm very, very bad. He stands and says, Benson it, Hosa. I'm a good man. I'm a godly man. But whenever you are in trouble, hold me. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? All right, that's not American English. American English would be like this. This man is well fed. He has enough food in his house. Now he's saying to me, Ben Cindy the Hosa, any day you are hungry, come to me for food. Did you hear what I'm saying? If he was worse than me, he can't help me. Did you hear that? If he's in more trouble than I am, he can help me. But he has no trouble. He's good. Oh, somebody say he's good. The Lord is what? The Lord is what? Good. I want to make it easy for you to understand. When you are in trouble, you don't need a man with double trouble. You need a man that has no trouble to hold to, to take you out of trouble. It is like if I'm on the floor and I fall, I don't need a man in the pit to lift me up. The, sir, can you lift me up? I'll sure try. <laughs> lift me up, sir. Now, why did he lift me up? He is standing. Do you understand what I'm saying? This man lifted me up because I was down. If he was there and I'm here and I'm looking for help, I don't need him. I need a man who is not in trouble like me to give me help. I need someone who is well to pray for me when I'm sick. I need someone who is alive to give me life when I'm dying. I don't need a dead man to pray for me to live. The Lord is good. Say that. Now, say it again. A stronghold. Did you hear that? God is what? Strong. 
to hold. God is strong to hold when I'm in trouble. Oh my God, you didn't hear that. The Lord is good, say it. A stronghold for me when I'm in trouble. Join the three together. The Lord is good. Strong enough for me to hold when I am in trouble. Oh my God. Don't you think that's whom you need? That's whom I need. Look at what this prophet brought out. In the day of trouble, he's good. He knoweth them that trust in him. Thank God. Say, God, know me. I trust him. Look at the eighth verse. But with an overrunning flood, he will make an altar end of the place thereof, and darkness shall pursue his enemies. Look at verse 9. As a Christian, what do you imagine against the Lord? Now that the Bible is telling you God is good, what is the thought in your heart? When I'm in trouble, do I still remember that God is good? That's what he's asking here. When things don't go the way I want them to go, do I change my opinion and think that the trouble is from God? His name is good. Or oh, somebody said good. When I'm in trouble, he allows me to come to him. Say good. But the prophet is asking, the day you need sun and rain fall, what do you think of God? Is he still good? When you plan wedding, and suddenly the plan break down. Is God still good? When you want to travel and your car break down, is God still good? The day you have your birthday and your car lost engine, is God still good? When you say tomorrow is my happy day and you lost someone very close to you, is God still good? What do you imagine against God? Don't forget, He's already good. Don't forget, He's a strong to hold in my days of trouble. Somebody should have said amen. But what do you imagine against God? What do you think of God when things are going adversarially against you? Hear what the prophet says. What do you imagine against God? He will make another end. Affliction shall not rise up again the second time. That for you, sir. That's for you, sir. That's for you, sir. That's for you, sir. For every affliction you have experienced, you shall not have a resurrection. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Whatever tribulation, whatever trial you saw once, it shall not come back again. If I were you, I would jump up and say, my, my affliction shall not come a second time. I, I didn't say you, I'm talking of me. I say if I were you, I would say this to myself. My affliction shall not have resurrection. Steve, that's for you. Every 
ugly trial you have passed through, it shall not come back second time. Every trial you have passed through, he shall not come a second time. All the tears you have shed, he shall not come back a second time. Every shame you have borne, he shall not come back a second time. Somebody say loud hallelujah. hallelujah. Affliction. Your affliction. Your tribulation. Your test to your faith. Shall not come back a second time. Somebody say amen. amen. Many times. It, it hurts us. Beyond forgetfulness. When we are hot. Do you know the day. God rescued me. Dr. Strader. When I read in my Bible. Jesus said nothing shall by any means hurt you. He didn't say it will not pain you. But he said it will not hurt you. It can pain you without hurting you. It can pain you. You sometimes I do things to give you pain. But Jesus said, if I give you pain, turn your pain to gain. Hallelujah. Don't allow the pain I give you to become a hurt to your spirit. Many times. Those you have helped, those you helped, turn their back against you. But he said, don't let it hurt you. When the people you try to lift, try to put you down, don't be hurt. When those you bless curse you, don't be hurt. When persons you are trying to feed give you a blow, don't be hurt. When anyone you lifted up is looking for something to put you down, don't be hurt. But know this, your affliction shall not come back a second time. Do you understand what I'm saying tonight? God is asking me to tell someone, not everybody, but maybe one person, whatever that thing is, that afflicted you before is not coming back a second time. Do you understand? Do you understand what I'm saying tonight? Has any one of you ever experienced affliction? Oh, if you are one of them, stand up. If you have ever seen any affliction since you were born. Well, I know you live in America, so there's no trouble in America. But fine. <laughs> but... Is there anyone here tonight? This is prophecy God brought me here for. I, I, want to, I want to be myself. Is there anyone that has ever experienced affliction? I'm talking of something is so hot you, you almost lost control. I'm asking you, have you ever passed through a situation Sometimes you wish it was not happening to you. Is there anybody like that here tonight? Is there anyone since you were born was once disappointed? Yeah? Oh, is there anyone that have at any time experienced tears you didn't call for? Almost all my tears, I've never sent for them. They just come. <laughs> Many times that I'm in trouble, I never wrote an application to say, trouble, come to my house. I just see him arrive, and I say, what are you doing here? He said, I'm already here. But listen to what the Bible sent me to tell you tonight. Whatsoever, that pain, that grief, that touch,
destruction, that trouble that afflicted you pain, it shall not come a second time. You may be seated, but I'm sent by God to tell you your last time of a repeated affliction was yesterday. I don't know what that means. I don't know the meaning. But I'm so grateful. My own affliction, we have no resurrection. It shall not come a second time. The prophet continued in verse 10. Look at his boss. For why they be folding together as stones? And while they are drunken as drunkards, they shall be devoured as trouble, fury dry. There is one come out of thee that imagineth evil against the Lord, a wicked counselor. Verse 12. Thus saith the Lord, though they be quiet and likewise many, yet Thus shall they be cut down when he shall pass through. Though I have afflicted thee, I will afflict thee no more. I pray this will be for somebody. If it's for no one else, it's for you, sir. imaginable to think you can be serving a good God and something terrible happened to you and the Lord said they have imagined evil I imagine good for you what do you think of me that's what they think of you but what do you think of me that's what God asked me People have imagined evil against you. The enemies have said something terrible about you. What do you say of yourself? Because the world afflicted me and God refused my affliction. <laughs> learn, sir, learn how to turn your scars to stars. Never you let the devil have the last say about your life. Why? Affliction shall not come back a second time. How many of you can say amen? amen. I just pray that what I'm saying tonight will help you. Whenever you find yourself in trouble, know that good is coming. You didn't hear that. Anytime you see yourself in tears believe that cheers is coming anytime you see yourself with obstacles know that miracles are coming so oh, somebody should have said amen to that why affliction shall not come back a second time God is not a wicked God God does not reward our good with evil. When we do something good in his name, when we do something good for him, he doesn't say, because thou hast so served me, thou payest thy tithe, thou givest thy offering, therefore shall thou be in trouble. God is not like that. He's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him somebody say amen. amen look at this verse 12 i want to repeat it again to your hearing hear this 
This is prophecy for me and you. Thus says the Lord. Who is speaking here? I'm asking you, who is speaking? Thus says the Lord. Though they be quiet and likewise many, yet thus shall they be cut down. When he shall pass through, though I have afflicted thee, I will afflict thee no more. May I ask you one more time, just by the lifting of your hand, how many of you have passed through trial once? How many of you have seen pain more than once? Oh, in Africa we see pain every day. How many of you have been short of money sometimes? Oh God, you are in America, God's own country. Oh yes. How many of you have at any time received reproach? How many of you at any time have received insult, accusation? God asked me to tell you, I permitted that one. But I will not permit any other one. Did anybody hear what I'm saying? The one you experienced before, God knew it. But he said, no new one is coming. Did anybody hear that? All right. Thirteenth verse. For now will I break his yoke from off thee. Oh, somebody stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up. Oh, Rama, Mama, Mama. <laughs> you didn't hear that. I hope you hear that. <laughs> I hope you hear that. Steve, did you hear that? God says, that thing that caused you shame, that thing that gave you tears and became a heavy load and a yoke around your neck, I tried this afternoon when I got home to push this message aside and God said you either preach it or I kill you. <laughs> Tell everyone afflicted the load shall be taken from their shoulders. <laughs> Put your two hands on your shoulders. And march forward here now quickly place your two hands on your shoulder please no matter how big you are get up and come forward just rest your hand on your shoulder I don't know what you believe but I believe that when the Bible says, Thus says the Lord, that's enough for me. Yes. Do you know what it means to have a repeated heart? When you close your eyes, you can't sleep. Do you know what it is sometimes when there's food on your table and you have no appetite? I'm talking of me. I don't know about you. Do you know what it means sometimes when you are looking for joy and sorrow comes and you don't know what to do? 
You see wrong, not because you are wrong, but because wrong wants to see you. But God said, I should tell you, affliction is not coming back no. a second time. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's not. When he first came, not because you were wrong. That's what God took. But he says, he says here, God is speaking. For now will I break the yoke, the yoke from off that weight, the heaviness, the load that press you down. God says, off, so lift it out of your shoulder. Oh, Baba Yekeleboho. I don't know how long it has taken you, but I have joy to tell you the yoke is off your shoulder. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Idausa is my father. 
my first encounter with uh, Archbishop Idahosa. He was doing a big crusade uh, in the center of Accra, which is called Circle. He said, if your faith say yes, God cannot say no. It also is a man that believes with God all things are possible. He had an unwavering faith. He had an unshaking faith. He had an unbreaking faith. He had faith in God. He saw God as he's talking to a faithful father. He saw God uh, like his son will see a father who he trusts that is faithful. Whatever I ask my daddy to do, he will do it. That was a Dowser's level of faith, beyond mass uh, explanation. He had faith. Spiritual, a person, yet he was so human in nature, a man who reached out to everyone, the high and the low in society, a man who rubbed shoulders with presidents and the highest of dignitaries you can think of in society. I feel very blessed because the Lord has called me to preach the word of God in Africa and particularly in Nigeria. Um, I've been here with my husband 40 years now. Uh, it, it's a blessing, and it's particularly been a blessing to work with Papa Idahosa and Mama Idahosa. When you talk about legacy, I remember traveling with Archbishop Idahosa to Kaduna for the consecration of Bishop Oyedepo. I think it's Faith Liberation Chapel. I remember it as if it is today. And uh, Archbishop said, we are going. And when we got to Benin Airport, uh, Okada, uh, that's chief. Igbenidion had given him an aircraft. So we flew from Benin City Airport to Kaduna. And I carried, and it was there he told me, in the preach, he said, This is my son. At the point, at that time, I didn't really know Bishop Edipo. This must have been early in the 80s or something. And then, many, a couple of weeks after, Bishop Edipo came to Church of God Mission Sunday evening service. And I remember the first message he preached. It was on the prodigal son. The man brought me out from the dungeon. Papa Idahosa was, he was a man full of energy and vision. Uh, he, he, he was always getting, moving on from one project to another. And often when he started a new project, we whites, we Oibos would say, why is he doing that? We couldn't see the vision at all. We thought, hmm, this is very funny. But then sometime later we would realize, oh yes, okay, I see why he's done that now. And I was a Muslim that I gave my life to Christ. In Ghana, there was this kind of freedom of worship. There were a lot of Muslims. And among those people that were the grace of God, I gave my life to Christ. And I wanted to go to Bible school when I felt the call of God upon my life. And unfortunately for me, at that particular time, with the Assemblies of God Ghana, there was no space for women to go to Bible school. So my pastor called me and said, he wants me to go to Nigeria and meet with Indahosa because there is a room in that particular ministry for women. And I traveled to Nigeria by the grace of God. On getting there, I met with the Archbishop, my first time of meeting the Archbishop in Dahosa of Church of God Mission International. What an awesome privilege it was to see this man of faith and boldness. I will never forget the Onicha Crusade. At that time, the head of state in Nigeria had passed the law that nobody should do open air crusades. And Archbishop said he went to pray and said, God, God, what they are saying, and God asked him, what do you want? He said, I want to do crusade. God said, go ahead and do your crusade. So he sent us, I was part of the uh, advanced team, to go and paste posters all over Onicha. And we went to put posters all over Onicha. 
And the first day of the crusade, a truckload of soldiers came. The man of faith, the man of prayer, the man of courage, the man of peace. And Archbishop mounted the platform and, and the soldiers came with their guns. When Archbishop started preaching, they all put their guns down. When he made the altar call, they all raised their hands to receive Jesus as Lord and personal savior. And we stood there and the whole crusade was an eye opener for us. And right there, I decided I needed to go and know more from this man. Fortunately, he was offering scholarship for people who want to attend Bible school in Benin, All Nation for Christ Bible Institute. And so that particular year, I uh, requested, I wrote, and fortunately, I was invited to come. So uh, we went to Nigeria to begin uh, my class Actually, I went there in 79. My class started in 1980. And uh, we went through the Bible training, and it was powerful. We were all charged up. He started uh, the Word of Faith schools. He started the Christian Hospital, Faith Mediplex. He started Benson Hose university all those and well he's he's a man we can't we can't forget he was a great example to us and i thank god it's particularly good for us whites british because in britain uh people are rather skeptical these days You'll not find many people who are really born again Christians. Um, people of faith are few in Britain, but if we can come here and our faith can be uh, increased, can be inspired, particularly by the things that Papa did, we are blessed. Let me share this. And I think for those who were around in Church of God Mission at that time, we traveled to Washington for Jesus. John Geminis we went to Baltimore flew to New York and then flew to Lagos on Nigeria with 11 hours. And then we took Okada from Okada Air from Lagos to Benin City. It was bad weather. Brother, it was one turbulence I, I told God, as long as I'm alive, never let me face anything like this again in my travel. I'm sure Dausa and the wife Margaret were in the first class, which is only divided by a curtain because it's a 90 sitter plane. And we took off from Lagos to Benin. It was bad weather, raining cats and dogs. We rented a storm. There were Filipino pilots. And then they said that he has lost contact. The pilot said, listen, he has lost contact with Lagos. And so he doesn't know where he is. That is ridiculous. You are supposed to be taking us to Benin. So if you, the pilot, has lost contact and you don't know where you are, and it's raining cats and dogs. What do you want us to do? And when I looked through the wood, brother, I was sitting at the edge of my seat like this. I was shaking in my boots. I'd never been scared like that. I thought I was, I, it, it was a life and death situation. The plane would lose, dive, turn left, turn right. When I looked through the curtain, I was looking at the reaction of the Abishoy sure Dausa, who said, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And then one time he stood up in the aircraft lifted his hand. I will never forget. He said, God, this is what he said, God, you called me and you didn't say I would die in a plane crash. My mission is not finished. My assignment is not over. We call the enemy to order and command the devil to back up. Now you pilot, you better find out where you are and take us to our destination in the name of Jesus. And he sat down. Five minutes time, the pilot said, he has made contact with Port Harcourt. Listen to this. We are supposed to be doing 30 minutes from Lagos to Benin. And the pilot, we, we landed in Port Harcourt. So we were on the, we have lost our way. We would have ended up in the sea. I will never forget. We landed in Lagos. It was still raining. Now this is where the testimony is. Mama, if was there, you can ask her. I told Papa, can I please go for bus? 
Because I was afraid, can we get a bus so we go to Bini? He said, no. James, you don't travel like I do. I must conquer the devil today in the air. I said, what is this? <laughs> I was scared. I said, Papa, you want us to die? He said, James, if I don't conquer the devil, I'll not be able to travel by air. Okada gave us his gold-plated aircraft. Chief Ibnidion, he called him. The plane rolled out from the hangar and we went by air to Benin. And that Sunday evening, he made me go to church and give a testimony. He said, Ghana boy. He calls me Ghana boy. I came and said, give them your testimony. You coward. <laughs> Another powerful miracle was when the witches in the whole world decided to come and have a meeting in Benin City. And Archbishop said, not when he's here. There won't be any such meeting. The chief priest then was summoned. His name, Chief Eboho, because he was a representative of the witches then. And he said, the meeting, nobody, not even God, could stop the witches from meeting. Then daddy said, or papa said, yes, God will not waste his time to stop you because I'm here to stop you. God has put me here to stop you. And guess what? That meeting never took place in Benin City. When you are with him one-on-one, -on -one, you will feel an aura that defies definition. You know, it's as if you are in the presence of God, of a deity, of something that is beyond where you are. You know, uh, he never celebrated mediocrity. He never took no for an answer. He dared to go where nobody wants to go or everybody feared to go. He was a man that believed in venturing where others fear to venture. He was a trailblazer. I remember those days, for example, this television ministry that's becoming anything today. It also started it in 1974-75. I'm honored to have been one of his sons. And uh, by the grace of God, I think that um, that sign wonder anointing and his boldness. I was I did a meeting for Dr. Maurice Serrillo in 2010. And just before I spoke in his world conference, they said, uh, oh, miracles don't happen in America because they have a lot of doctors. It happens in the third world. Well, when I took the microphone, I just shared my testimony. 23 cripples gave me their sticks and began to walk. Um, that kind of boldness to decree and declare, I took it from the late Archbishop. I believe in the transference of spirits, and I believe strongly, like God told Moses, I will take up the spirit that is upon you, and I will put it upon the 70. I'm one of the people who took of that spirit of signs and wonders from the Archbishop. Making a movie of the Archbishop will really, really help the next generation. Because the young preachers and the young ministers that are coming up have no clue of who he was. It, I mean, he will still be preaching and cripples will start walking. Um, that was an awesome man of faith. I remember whilst we were in school, he went to visit and it was shown on TV. Um, we, he went to visit Kenneth Copeland. And when he got there, they, he was supposed to have gone the previous day, but he arrived late. So they announced, when they announced that the Archbishop Idahosa has arrived, six cripples got out of their wheelchairs. That is how anointed uh, Papa was. We must keep his legacy alive. Idahosa is dead to some people, but to us, to me, Idahosa lives. Hello, I am Bishop Margaret Benson Idahosa, the wife 
of the late Archbishop Benson Idahosa that did wonders while he was on earth here. Early in the morning when I rise, I will lift up my eyes. Now let me let you know how I got to meet him. You know, in those early years, he used to ride his bicycle with some trucks going from street to street and one of it was my street. And every time he comes, we call him pastor. Pastor, he was young then, about 21 or 22. He was very, very young, but he didn't mind. He was not ashamed of the gospel because he knew that that was the power of God in his life. And, and one of these days he was riding past and people were crying in my house. What's up? Monkey, what's up? And he just stopped, brought his, brought his uh, small little Bible out and came in, just uh, uh, with it through the crowd. And he came and I said, Pastor, please, today is not like any other day. Somebody just died. <laughs> He say, ah, I have been riding my bicycle all through. Till this time, it was about four o'clock. And I want to raise somebody. I say, he, please, I beg you. Don't, don't make a mockery of your God. He said, no, 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 no. I want to wake him up because God has told me in the book. Then he opened the book and read it that, uh, uh, Behold, I have given you power to tread upon serpent, to tread upon scorpions, and to raise the dead. And I said, listen, don't make a mockery of yourself. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal that sin. Raise the dead! I said what? I beg, where can I talk? Again? Again, again! Pastor, Pastor. Benson. You mean what you say that we can raise dead person? Yes, absolutely. Have you raised dead person before? Uh, no. Why? But you say I can't do it. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Hey. He said, no, 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 come and show me where the baby was. So I said, okay. I took him to the room where the baby was lying. It, it was, she, she was about uh, three years old, three or four, four years old then. And I said, listen. This baby died at about nine, and it's about four o'clock now. The baby is already changing color. The fact why why he why she was not being buried at this time is that the father has to go to the secretariat to get a death certificate, and he said, "Oh, there's no need for that now. Let's do it. Let's do it." I said, "How? How are you going to do it?" And he said, "Okay, go out if you don't want to see see me do it." But you know. As a stubborn child, then I stood at the I stood at the door. I stood at the door with my back laid at the door. One, one eye on this side and one eye on the front door. And he prayed. Child, be healed. After he prayed, he asked me, what is the name of the child? Send it to your throne. What's in the girl name? Whoa. I say it's Inwarata. I'm a living testimony. 
I give God the glory for keep counting me among the living today. I'm a testimony that the whole world know about through my father, late Ben Sinidahosa. I was sick about two weeks. After the sick, conversion hold me. So I, I, I died. When I died, they kept me inside one room. So my people was crying, weeping. About two hours, a bit three hours later, my father come, my late Ben Sinidahosa. He said, what is happening? They told him that her daughter, their daughter has lost. They said, what happened to her? He said, she was confused. So they tried the in, uh, ordinary native daughter tried they can raise her back to life. He said, where is her now? He said, she swallowed there. He said, he asked my father the question. He said, daddy, do you believe that the God I serve can raise him, come back to life? My father said, yes. He said they should take him to the room. Then take him to where they, they lie me down. So carry me, they were praying with some of members. As they pray, with God that answered by fire, hear their prayer. I come back to life. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! That is how I'm a living so today. And he just stretched his Bible and himself on that child and said, Inuata, I command you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that has empowered me to raise the dead. Now, come back to life. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Inuata, I command you, rise up! I was just peeping. And all of a sudden, the, the child that died at about 9 o'clock sneezed. <laughs> <laughs> and that made bed to me after a year and three months in the womb. So my mother passed through many tribulations before she gave back to me. Then he said, maybe I'm not a baby, I'm a wood, I'm this, but for God be thy glory. When they gave back to me, I'm, I'm a human being. And after they gave back to me, the devil, the useless man, raised up his ugly head to take my soul away. Did you know I took to my heels? I couldn't stand I couldn't wait. And I ran out. With him to the mother. He said, Please give this child something to eat. And everybody was surprised. Everyone was shocked. Ah, and he just left. And when he left, I, I sat down and I was thinking, What is the thing that made this man to raise this child from the dead? There must be power superpower then i wasn't a child of god my mother used to serve um, she was a princess of olokun shango and all that and i said mm, the, the the power that raised this child from the dead must be a power that surpasses the power of these graving images that has no power so the father just came and we started celebrating, but he was gone. But in the night I sat and I, I started praying and I said, God, if you were the one that raised that child up, just touch me. I have been hearing messages of salvation from here and there. Even the church I, 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 I used to go then, but I just knelt down and I said, Father, let Jesus come into my heart right now and 
I need to know this power that raised this child. And that was all I prayed. I didn't know how to pray salvation prayer, but I just knelt down and I said, Father, please, if you were the one that raised this child up, let come into my life and let me act and walk and believe like us. That young man that we call pastor believed, and he did this. And you know, when I finished prayers, there was an abundant joy, unspeakable joy in my spirit. And the following day, uh, we, we used to call him Brother Benson. He came and said, where is the child? We said, the child is there. And I called him to the room and I said, you know what I did last night? I didn't know. Uh, I, I don't know how to do it, but I just knelt by my bedside and I said, God, if you were the one that raised that child up, let me have a part of that power. I said, ah, you have done it. And I knelt down, he prayed, and I, and I said the, the sinner's prayer, and that was what got me into where I am now. And I'm glad. Okay, because I'm still alive, my father Benson Dalsa is still alive because I'm a living testimony. I'm glad that I, 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 I'm doing what I'm doing now because there was sign, there was wonder, there was, there, there was miracle that got into my heart. Thank God for today and my life. I have about eight children, two girls, and two boys and six girls. He was a man that did everything by faith. I have about 10 grandchildren to the glory of God. Now I understand the, the type of joy. The Bible said that the joy that no man can give, that is the joy that Jesus gives when you give your life to him. He no mega jere, he no mega ta, he Jesu me go wese, he no mega ta go wese. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, 
prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the homepage and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Thank you for taking the time to watch this powerful video of Archbishop Benson Indaosa. Archbishop Benson Indaosa was a charismatic Pentecostal preacher. He is the founder of Church of God Mission International. Archbishop Benson Indaosa was popularly referred to as the father of Pentecostalism in Nigeria. And I'd like you to know that he was also my spiritual father please do not forget to share this video to bless all the people let this video go viral remain blessed hello this video is about Archbishop Bensi Idaosa his early Christian ministry testimony as a young Christian, I once heard my pastor say during a morning service that Christians could raise the dead in the name of the Lord Jesus. I believe it with my, all my heart. And flying around on my bicycle in those days, I went through the city of Benin in Nigeria in search of a dead person to raise to life. After five hours of hard searching, I found a company where a little girl had died a few hours before. The corpse had been cleaned and prepared for burial. I walked boldly to the father of the child. The God whom I serve can bring your baby back to life. I told him, will you permit me to pray for the child and bring her back to life? The man was startled, but he agreed. I walked into the room and up to the bed. The child was cold and dead. With strong faith in the Lord, I called on the Lord to restore the child back to life. I turned to the corpse and called it by name. Arise in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, glory to God. The corpse sneezed heavily. Alas, the child had come back to life. God is Bensi Indaosa. Now, Bensi Indaosa childhood. Bensi Indaosa was born in Benin City on September 11, 1938 to a pagan parents. He was a sickly infant who was always fainting. As a result of his constant illness, his father ordered the mother to throw him in the dustbin. When he was 18, year, 18 months old, he was left on a rubbish heap to die. He was rejected by his father, sent to work on the farm as a servant, and was denied education until he was 14 years old. His education was irregular due to the poor financial status of his parents. 
He later took correspondence course from Britain and the United States while working in Bathershoe Company. His conversion and call to ministry. His conversion was drastic and his calling supernatural. He was converted by Pastor Akpos on a football field on one Sunday afternoon while playing soccer with his teammates. Thus, Young Benson, Young Benson became the first Benin member of Pastor Akbar's small congregation. As a young convert, he became very zealous in winning souls and in conducting outreaches in villages around Benin City. He was called to the ministry in a ninth vision from the Lord. I have called you that you might take the gospel around the world in my name, preach the gospel, and I will confirm my words with signs following said the voice from heaven. The room was filled with the presence of God as Benson fell to his knees before the Lord. Wherever you want me to go, I will go. He prayed through the night, renewing his vows to God and interceding for his people who were yet to hear the message of salvation. After his call, Benson launched into ministry, work preaching from village to village. The gospel of, the, of, of Jesus Christ with great power and anointing. More people confess Christ as their Savior and more healings occur as he prayed for the sick. Expansion of his ministry and his credentials. Archbishop Benson Daosa, the Archbishop himself and the founder of Church of God Mission International Incorporated with his headquarters in Benin City, Nigeria, established over 6,000 churches throughout Nigeria, Ghana before 90, 1971. Many of the ministers he supervised pastor churches of 1,000 to 4,000 people. In addition to filling the position of Archbishop of Church of God Mission, he, also, he, he was also president of All Nation for Christ Bible Institute, president of Idaosa World Outreach, and president of Faith Medical Center. He had positions in numerous organizations, including the College of, Bish of Bishop of the International Communion of Christian Churches and the Ora Robert uh, University in Oklahoma. He also earned a diploma in divinity from Christ for the Nation Institute in Dallas, Texas, which he attended in 1971 a doctorate of divinity in 1981 from the world faith college new orleans and a doctor of law degree from ora robert university in march 1984 he also received another degree he's also received other degrees from the international university in Brussels, belgium archbishop benson and his wife margaret idaosa were blessed with four children Idaosa Supreme Tax. So winning was Idaosa primary consign with a motto evangelism our supreme tax. He worked towards his goal of reaching the origin Nigeria, Africa, and the rest of the world with the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. As a black African, he found the doors of African countries were wide open and he ministered in over 133 countries all 123 countries all over the world crusade played a major role in his ministry he was involved at least one crusade per month a record crowd of nearly 1 million people a night attended his lagos crusade in april 1985 he established the redemption television ministry with a potential viewing audience of 15 million people what leading gospel minister said about Archbishop Idaosa. According to Mrs. Gordon Frada Lisser, President of Christ for the Nation Incorporated, Dallas, Texas, USA, I know of no young black in all Africa who is preaching, who is reaching million as Benson is in crusade with hundreds of thousands in attendance in, in, a, in his weekly nationwide telecast in his Bible school, training eager students from several nations. He also conducted campaigns in Sweden, Singapore, Malaysia, Korea, Australia, and United States, 
where he often appeared on national religious telecast. His burden for souls, his ministry of healing and miracles, even to the raising of several dead, demonstrates his demonstrate he is especially core of the Lord in this end time. Dr. Ben Akosa remarked, Benson Daosa is sought after by everyone in the state, from government officials to beggars. When they pose questions and explain their problem to this man, they receive instantaneous miracle solution, just as the people did in Bible days with God's prophet. The people got miraculous answer from his, from this mighty leader of God's people, said Daniel Oris. Benin City respect and salute this great man of God even at his death. I have been with him on visit to many officials, to the governor, to the powerful Benin tribal kings. He moved with God and his people knows it. His great miracle cathedral, his headquarters sit over 10,000 in 1981. His Bible school attract upper class people from different African nations and also come from Maurice, India, uh, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Indonesia, Singapore, Philippines, Hong Kong, Japan, Korea, the Middle East, Europe and other nations of the world. A truly international Bible training center of dynamic faith. People know that Bishop Idaosa preached what he practiced. Dr. Idaosa evangelistic ministry has reached nations around the world. He was the first Af black African evangelist to shake Australia in a massive crusade that got national attention. His seminar have affected Christians and church leaders in many countries. I sincerely salute this man because he practiced among his own people what he preached to the world. Bensi Indaosa was a man who believed God's promises and that God's miracle provision applies to Africans as well as to Americans. He believed that African has a part in God's work and African will reap God's blessing. Evangelist T. S. Bond from Tulsa, Oklahoma remarked, Many who followed Idaosa's teaching have been saved from poverty and have learned to plant out of their des have learned how to plant out of their desperate need and to look to God as their divine source, thereby becoming prosperous Christian in their own land. Idaosa rose from the rank of an ordinary man to award leaders leadership as a pastor, a builder, a counselor, a prophet, a teacher, uh, an apostle an evangelist, a man of godly wisdom and of Christ-like compassion, whose ministry has blessed million, millions the world over. Idaosa was the greatest African ambassador of the apostolic Christian faith to the world. The secret of his success. Idaosa operated in faith. He had a robust faith. He believed and trusted God with a childlike faith. He once said that living a daily life of absolute faith in God is the only secret to great success. He believed God for everything. All things are possible to him that believes. He spent quality times in prayer and in the study of God's word. He said that if someone spent time studying the Bible and acting on it, people will come looking for that person for life solutions. Idaosa also spent time studying the works and the lives of other successful people, both in the gospel ministry and other faith of human endeavors. And he applied the principles he learned, he learned from these successful people to his life and ministry. He was very energetic, hardworking. One of the ministers who served under him said that he had never seen a man who worked as hard as Archbishop Benson Idaosa. He was committed and consistent, and he had confidence in himself. He was very humble and full of godly wisdom. Archbishop Bensi Idaosa was said to be the leader of over 7 million Jesus people worldwide before he went to be with the Lord in February 1998. Now I'm going to 
talk about his early ministry again as a youth he got converted to christianity by a certain pastor at ball and joined the flagging congregation as one of the first members he was very active and converted many to christianity after experiencing a revelation from god calling him into ministry he began to conduct outreaches from village to village before establish, establishing his church in a store in Benin City. Archbishop Benson Idaosa was well known for many notable quotable quotes, including, My God is not a poor God. Your attitude determines your your attitude determines your attitude. It is more risky not to take risk. I am a possibilitarian. A big head without a big brain is a big load to the neck. If your faith says yes, God cannot say no. Among others, many of these messages on faith, miracle, and prosperity remain a classic among Pentecostal. He had strong links with international gospel ministers like Billy Graham, T.L.S. Bond, Kenneth Hagin, Penny Inn, Graham Bonke, Maurice Cerullo, Ora Robert, amongst others, and took the gospel to 145 nations in his lifetime. At the time of his death in 1998, he had preached to more white than any black man and to more black than any white man. His desire to meet the need of the total man led him to establish several other arms of the ministry apart from the church. They include Faith, Metaplex, All Nation for Christ Bible Institute, World of Faith, Group of School, Benson Indaosa University, which is currently under leadership of a son, Reverend E. F. B. Uh, Idaosa. His wife, Margaret uh, Idaosa, is the current Archbishop of the church. It was used by God to perform many miracles, including healing the blinds, raising up 28 people from the dead at different times in his ministry. You must understand this powerful man of God that God used to affect the nation of the world and I'm glad and privileged that he was my father in the Lord I am honored to be a part of his anointing a part of his of his ministry I want to ask you please make sure you share these videos this video this particular video to bless all the people and make sure you have enough time to visit Anointed Tube, support Anointed Tube, and let people all over the world around you, your village, your town, your city, your colleagues, your family, your friends, all your contact, get to know about Anointed Tube. So thank you for taking the time to listen to this or, or watch this video. I believe that um, your life can never remain the same because God's servant was such a powerful powerful humble great man of God that God used before he was called to be with him I, and I'll say it again I am grateful and I'm privileged to be a son to Archbishop Bensi in the house the Lord bless you.